Today, we are going to talk about one of the most controversial and influential UFO whistleblowers in the history of ufology, Bob Lazer. Bob Lazer is a physicist and businessman who was hired in the late 1980s to work for a top secret, black budget U. S. military project reverse engineering alien spacecrafts at a top secret facility located in the Nevada desert near Area 51 called S4. Laser was recruited to Area 51 as a propulsion expert. Area 51 is the infamous military base in Nevada that was featured in the science fiction movie Independence Day. Recently Area 51 was in the news when in September 2019 Internet trolls and alien enthusiasts gathered in a town near Area 51 Duke to online calls for people to, to raid the Area 51 base in search of aliens or UFOs. This doesn't seem like it was a well thought out plan, but the movement gained enough traction online. It prompted the US Air Force to make a public statement saying anyone caught trying to infiltrate a US military base would be federally prosecuted and potentially shot. When it was all said and done no one actually tried to raid the base. It was just a few dozen UFO enthusiasts having a good time. Hello and welcome to All Things Interesting, where we explore the most fascinating, strange and mysterious stories and theories humanity has to offer. From extraterrestrial encounters, UFOs, time travel and the paranormal to history's most unbelievable and important people and events. Here at All Things Interesting we look for the truth, no matter how strange or unbelievable it may seem. I'm broke and today, we are looking into the true story of Bob Lazar, S4 and Area 51. At the time of Bob Lazar's initial claims in the 1980s, the base at Area 51 and the lesser known S4 where top secret and unacknowledged US military installations. The US government completely denied the existence of Area 51 and S4 for many decades. The base was even blacked out of all satellite photos taken of the area. According to Bob Lazer, he was shown various briefing documents during his time at S4. At the time, he was confused as to why they would be showing him these documents when normally such. Things are compartmentalized Bob Lazer was tasked with attempting to reverse engineer the exotic propulsion technology, or at least determine how it functioned. During his time at S4, he was only too allowed to communicate with his co-worker, a man named Barry, and their direct supervisor. The extraordinary documents Lazer read, said the United States government had made. Contact with non-human biological entities, or aliens and the U.S government was also aware of the aliens' involvement in human affairs. For thousands of years, which the aliens reportedly admitted to the U.S. government, Laser said he believed some of the aliens and spacecraft may have been. From the Zeta Reticuli star system based on some of the information he had access to. The Zeta Reticuli star system is about 39 light years from Earth. Another report Laser read said that one of alien spacecrafts the United States government has possession of came from an ancient archaeological dig site and is believed to be at least several thousands of years old. Although the craft's true age and origin is currently unknown, in his time at S4 Laser saw nine different alien spacecraft, some of which he was eventually able to enter and examine while under the supervision of his superiors and his co-worker at S4 Barry. Over the years, Lazar's story has been met with skepticism and criticism by many people who question his credibility, his education, his motives, and his evidence. However, there are also many people who believe Bob Lazar is telling the truth and that he has exposed one of the biggest cover-ups in history. In this video, we will look at the facts of Lazar's claims. First of all, let's talk about Lazar's education. He says he studied physics and attended classes at M, IT and Caltech, two of the most prestigious universities in the world. However, both institutions have no records of him ever attending or graduating from them. How can this be? Well, there are two possible explanations. Either Laser is lying about his education, 
or his records have been erased by the government as part of a disinformation campaign to discredit him. And you would be surprised to know how many people believe the latter is true, including alleged former classmates of Laser and verified former students who say they attended classes with Laser. Now if the government is trying to discredit Laser, it wouldn't be the first or last time the government used these tactics to discredit someone and hide the truth. It should also be known Laser has never made a penny from his claims or the stories and documentaries made about him. We think the second option is more likely, and here's why. Laser has shown evidence that he worked at Los Alamos National Laboratory, a top secret facility that conducts research on nuclear weapons and other advanced technologies. Not just anyone can get a job at Los Alamos. Bob appeared in a newspaper article 1982 with his jet-powered car, which he built himself in his garage, and in the article the newspaper identified him as a physicist at Los Alamos. He also appeared in a phone directory of Los Alamos employees in 1989. And when he went to Los Alamos with reporters, he knew his way around the building and several employees remembered him. So, if Laser was able to work at such a high-level place, it means he must have had some impressive credentials and qualifications. So, why would he lie about his education if he already had a successful career? It is true that lots of people lie on their resume for one reason or another, but something tells me the Los Alamos National Laboratory is the type of place to thoroughly check the references of its applicants. Furthermore, Laser has demonstrated a remarkable knowledge of physics and engineering, especially when it comes to the alien technology he claims to have worked on. He described in detail how the flying saucers were powered by a device called an antimatter reactor, which used a rare element called Element 115 to generate gravity waves. The FBI even raided Lazar's home and business because they believed he may have been in possession of a stable form of Element 115 that modern scientists are yet to discover. Why would the FBI raid Lazar's home and business over a version of an element that supposedly doesn't exist? Laser also explained how the saucers could bend space and time around them, allowing them to travel faster than light and across vast distances. Also Lazar's description of how the UFOs fly is consistent with sightings by US Navy pilot Commander David Fravor. The Navy pilot, who caught the famous TIC-TAC UFO footage of his aircraft's radar before seeing the craft with his own eyes. There have also been numerous other eyewitness accounts of UFOs flying this way as well as recent high-definition video footage taken by a woman on a commercial flight. Lazar's descriptions have been so accurate and consistent that they inspired many scientists and researchers to investigate his claims further. For example, physicist Stanton Friedman, who initially doubted Lazar's story, later admitted that he was impressed by Lazar's technical knowledge and ability to answer complex questions without hesitation. Laser also described a security device that read the lengths of the bones in your hand that was later confirmed by Jeremy Corbell. Friedman also confirmed that element 115 was indeed real and that it had been synthesized by Russian scientists in 2003. Although the element 115 the Russian scientists were able to synthesize is unstable, lots of elements have both stable and unstable versions and it is actually very common. Friedman also found out that there were patents for antimatter reactors dating back to the 1950s something we still don't seem to have in 2023. Or, Dow. Another example, as the previously mentioned Jeremy Corbell, a filmmaker who made a documentary about Lazar's story in 2018. Corbell also started as a skeptic, interviewed Lazar extensively, and conducted several tests to verify his claims. He was able to confirm Lazar's descriptions of a hand scanner that matched the one he used at the secret facility in Area 51 called S4. He also obtained a video of laser testing a jet engine in his backyard in 1989. 
which showed his expertise in building and operating such advanced and complex devices. Laser also had footage of alleged UFOs he filmed when he took his friends to see the UFOs weekly maneuverability testing. Corbell also witnessed Laser being raided by the FBI shortly after they discussed Element 115 on camera, leading many to believe he must be telling the truth if the FBI thinks it's possible Bob Laser might have in his possession an element that supposedly shouldn't exist, or at least not in a stable form. These are just some of the pieces of evidence that support Lazar's story. There are many more, such as the witnesses who saw him near Area 51 with his friends watching UFOs. The polygraph tests Laser has passed, the predictions he made that have came true, and so on. The point is, Lazar's story is not just a fantasy or a fabrication. It is based on real events and real evidence that can be verified by anyone who is willing to look into it. Hopefully one day soon, we can put the argument of the truth of Bob Lazar's claims to rest. Until then keep an eye on the sky and an ear to the ground. While Lazar's claims continue to raise questions in the minds of the public, they also shed light on a larger issue, the public's right to know. So. Is secrecy justified if it hinders our collective understanding of the universe and potential technological advancements that could end disease, poverty, and hunger? One thing is very obvious. Bob Lazar's story has remained consistent and left a lasting impact on pop culture, the UFO community, and the world. His claims have ignited in teased discussions about government transparency the possibility of advanced extraterrestrial civilizations, and the current limits and achievements of human technological advancement. We hope this video has given you some insight into the truth of Bob Lazar's story. We believe that Bob Lazar is being honest about what he says he was involved in. His story as fantastic as it is, has not changed once in almost 40 years. He seems to be a very smart and educated, but otherwise average man who may have risked his life to reveal one of the most important secrets of mankind. The answer to whether or not we are alone in the universe, whether or not we have been and possibly still are, visited by alien beings from other worlds or dimensions for at least several centuries. Thank you for joining us here at All Things Interesting today and giving our small channel a chance to win you over. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos on all of your favorite topics. I want to give a special thanks to our brave warriors that watch every episode to the very end. I know it's not always easy, but with your help I know we can defeat the evil Lord Algorithm and his deadly weapons of mass demonetization. See you next time on All Things Interesting. Stay weird, white dog out.